have a SharePoint list of onboarding tasks that need to be completed by each new employee. With this custom view I created, it will display a list of tasks assigned to the current logged in employee. However, I'd also like to make sure that employees can only view their own tasks without seeing anyone else's tasks. I can grant item level permissions to each item, but this approach would be time consuming and prone to errors. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to create an automation that will grant item level permissions to your SharePoint list based on the assigned to user column. This automation will go through the entire list and adjust the permissions for each item so the assigned to user will have the ability to view the status of their own tasks. In Power Automate, I'll create a new instant cloud flow. Give your flow a name and select the manual trigger. We'll start by building a way to adjust the item level permissions in bulk, and at the end of the video, I'll show you how to build a flow so that it grants appropriate permissions each time a new item is added to the list. In a different video, I'll cover how to use a flow to generate this onboarding tasks list from a list of employees and a master list of tasks while granting item level permissions. This employee onboarding list is on a SharePoint team site. Permissions for this list are unique. Although the default view only displays items assigned to the logged in user, all employees currently have read access to the entire list, allowing them to view the full list if they wanted to. I'm going to remove the all staff user permissions since we'll be granting item level permissions through the Power Automate flow. Add a get items action. Select your site address and list name. In the get items action, click on the show advanced options. You can reduce the number of items returned by using a filter query. I need to get the entire list, so I'll leave this blank. Adjust the top count to a lower number while you're still building your flow. It will take less time for the get items action to run, which will allow you to verify that your flow is working on a smaller set of items. You can easily tweak and adjust your flow without needing to wait for the get items action to return the entire list. I'll adjust my top count to five. I'm going to add a compose action to my flow to store the number of items returned from the get items action. This is completely optional. However, if you are new to building Power Automate flows, adding compose actions to check for the number of items returned can be helpful, especially when using a filter query. Insert an expression. We'll use the length function. Insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. I'll save the flow and give it a test. By expanding this compose action, I can see the number of items returned. Add and apply to each action. We'll use this action to loop through each item returned from the get items action. Insert the value dynamic content from the get items action here. Add the grant access to an item or folder action. Select the site address and list. In the ID field, insert the ID dynamic content from the get items action. Select dynamic content and select the assigned to email dynamic content. For the roles, select can view. In my particular case, users only need permissions to view the item, not edit it. Adjust this to suit your needs. Because I don't want to notify the recipients, I'll select no. Let's run a test and verify the flow is working correctly. The flow ran successfully. Let's check the SharePoint list. I'll select the second item in the SharePoint list since I've already manually granted permissions to the first item. I'll click on the info icon to open the details pane. Under the has access header, you can see that this user was granted permissions to this item. I'll check the next few items to verify that the flow worked. I'll remove the top count number. My SharePoint list contains a little over 200 items. Power Automate limits the number of records returned from the Get Items action to 100. In the Get Items action, click on the three dots and select Settings. Toggle on Pagination and set the threshold to 250. Depending on your needs and limitations, adjust these settings to suit your needs. I'll save this flow and give it a test.
Back in SharePoint, you can see that each item has been granted item level permissions. This user can only see her items no matter which view she selects. This flow took a little over two minutes to run on just over 200 items. I'm going to turn on the concurrency control for the apply to each action and run it one more time. Let's see how long it takes for this flow to run now. By default, the concurrency control is turned off, which means that the apply to each action loops through each item one after the other. With the concurrency control turned off, this flow took just a little over two minutes to run. When the concurrency control is turned on, the apply to each action loops through a number of items at the same time. In this case, 50. This run only took 14 seconds to run. It's important to note that if you are using a set variable action, you should leave the concurrency control off. To grant permissions to an item after it's created, we need a slightly different flow. Create an automated cloud flow. Give your flow a name and we'll use the when an item is created trigger. Select your site address and list name. Add a grant access to an item or folder action. Select your site address and list name. For the ID field, insert the ID dynamic content from the previous action. For the recipients field, click Add Dynamic Content and insert the Assigned to Email Dynamic Content from the previous action. For the roles, select Can View. Because I don't want to notify the recipients, I'll select No. Save the flow and let's test it out. In my SharePoint list, I'll add a test item. In Power Automate, we can see the flow has run successfully. If I check the SharePoint list item, item level permissions have been granted. What other tasks are you looking to automate? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. Are you interested in learning how I automated the creation of this onboarding task log? If so, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. Thanks for watching.